Recently I've been very impressed at how well my old PS3 games hold up nowadays on RPCS3, the very impressive PS3 emulator. Heavenly Sword, a mixed reception PS3 launch title, looks pretty good nowadays at 60fps 1080p. And this sent me down a rabbit hole of my favourite old games. But I noticed no matter how much you can sparkle up the gameplay, time has not been kind to the 2007 era video game FMVs. At the same time, I found a YouTube channel that has been using AI to upscale old video game trailers. Well, two rabbit holes later, it's been a month and a half and I'm starving to death and I've been asking myself, can you remaster video game cutscenes and are they any good? And the answer is yes. Maybe. Uh, uh, they're alright. Kind of. At the start of last year, the AI upscaled backgrounds of the Final Fantasy VII Remake mod, Remake mod, the mod, the Final Fantasy VII mod, made quite a hubbub on the internet. And for good reason too. It looks great. But what I've discovered over a month or so of upscaling testing is that these are the best case scenario. Upscaling introduces artifacts, some worse than others depending on the algorithm, but for the most part in single images it's hard to notice. In videos however, each frame needs to blend smoothly into one another without being distracting. As well as this, the Final Fantasy VII images are low resolution but fairly high quality in every other way. In the game you could already tell what things were, there wasn't any strange compression or weird lines anywhere, it just looked a little bit soft. And those are the two things that have gotten in the way of AI upscaling these videos. That and the fact that the software for it, Topaz AI, kind of sucks. That's why if you're not using this for games, you can get genuinely pretty great results with old movies or cartoons, as long as they were already high quality, just low resolution. Let me save you some headaches, and by headaches I mean a month and a half of your time. There's six algorithms in Topaz that are all so poorly explained I am still not quite sure what they're actually good for, but I think I have a pretty good idea. If it's footage of people doing people things you're trying to upscale, use Gaia HQ. It's probably the most common use case and thankfully it does its job pretty well. So it's a good pick if you've got old home movies, films, or a snuff collection that needs crisping up. Obviously that's a joke, I don't do that. Means we're pretty high quality to begin with. There's also another algorithm called Gaia CG, which in its newest update says it's for, and I quote, upscaling cartoon input video. Now I don't know about you, but I've never really been bothered about the resolution of my cartons, so I'll assume for normal human beings that that is supposed to say cartoon. You know it's a bad sign when four word long sentences aren't even being spell checked before being shipped. If you have any 2D animated content, probably don't use that one. Maybe? I've been using it for a month and a half, I'm still not really sure. Use another poorly explained algorithm called Thea Fidelity V4. This gives that giveaway AI painterly artifacting you see sometimes on AI upscaling that looks awful on real life looking objects but is really good at crisping up low texture detail content like 2D animation. So if you're looking to improve anime or other anime looking content, this might be for- I'm talking about porn by the way- this might be for you. The third branch of algorithms is named Artemis and describes itself identically as Guy HQ, just adding that it is less flickery. What does that mean? There's no picture examples for any of these descriptions, so I've just had to guess my way through all of these things. If it means less flickery and that it's good at getting rid of aliasing, then yes, it was good at that, but since the latest update, it actually seems to make aliasing worse. Thankfully, Gaia CG, while disappointingly poor at upscaling my milk supply, currently seems to be the best option for video game FMVs. Castlevania Lords of Shadow has been my current project of choice, and it has a lot of movies that look notably low resolution next to the surprisingly well-edged 2010 game assets. A strange choice for these movies, and the main reason I wanted to upscale them, is that they're all 720p but have no anti-aliasing whatsoever, which means a lot of distant or dense detail gets completely destroyed, like these tree branches in the wide shot of this witch's hut. They look so crunchy they function as the worst case scenario for the upscaler, but Gaia CG does a pretty decent job. In fact, these tree branches being almost completely reconstructed has blown my tiny little gamer mind. You can see it manages to smooth out pixels in a fairly natural looking way and removes a lot of aliasing, although it's so heavy in this footage that a lot of the jaggy still remain. So far from perfect results, but honestly, I've been very happy with it in this game. The aliasing on our goat friends here looks much improved, and there's a fair amount of texture detail in this game that manages to come back out as well. Two PS3 generation games that I am probably undeservingly fond of are the two Ninja Theory games back when Andy Serkis was still placing his sultry talents into video games. 
Heavenly Sword and Enslaved Odyssey to the West. They were both in the era of overzealous, crappy looking bloom and low quality textures. Along with this, a bunch of their cutscenes have noticeable blocking, so they're a pretty good test for some upscaling. As well as this, I wanted to see if upscaled movies functioned in PS3 games running on RPCS3, as well as regular PC games. And here's where my negativities melt away for a second, because Gaia HQ does an amazing job of deblocking these. The smoke plumes on this cutscene where an engine explodes looks awful in the original cutscene, but Guy HQ manages to turn all this 2006 era YouTube video mess into a pretty convincing looking smoke plume. Because textures are so low quality to begin with in these titles, most of it doesn't look much improved. However, the noticeable differences are some wide shots where there's some obvious lost detail from compression. In this case, the AI manages to do a pretty good job of parsing it back together. As well as this, text also becomes a lot more clear after upscaling as well. Star Wars The Force Unleashed is a game with a lot of cutscenes and a lot of close-ups as well, which is ironic considering most characters only have about three polygons per lip in this game. How long has your father been feeding Coda information about- This is another case of I have no idea what's going on. Topaz's last version of Gaia CG did a pretty decent job of putting some details back together, but now not so much. On top of this, apart from some nice hand-drawn backgrounds, most of the characters are quite low poly anyway, so close-ups just turn Play-Doh characters into high-definition Play-Doh characters. Guy CG seems like the best option, but Topaz just doesn't like these cutscenes. I've upscaled this one movie three different times, and they all come out this stuttery broken mess. Some of the most success I've had is with the 2008 reboot of Prince of Persia. Luckily for me, all the menus in R are stored as video files. They don't move very much either, so the program did a really good job of sharpening them up. Apart from five short little cutscenes, all of these clips don't have any audio, so they were really easy to upscale and get back into the game without any more editing. The game's unlockable art showcase is also a sequence of videos, so not only did I upscale those, but I also extracted each frame so there's a perfect quality PNG file of each piece of artwork now. I'll be sure to share them soon. I'll be sure to share them soon. I'll be sure to... I'll, sh I'll put them on the internet soon, because they look really nice. The shiny menus make a big difference and go a long way to make the game not feel 12 years old. So I'll release this soon for people to download. Back to Castlevania, the DLC have these painterly animated cutscenes that upscale very nicely with Thea Fidelity. They look super crisp and luckily for me, Thea's over twice as fast as the Gaia algorithms. The graphic novel style cutscenes from the original Infamous also responded very well to this. The original files actually look surprisingly fantastic nowadays, but if you zoom in in the details you can see how much it improved. I hope that was useful, because that was literally dozens of hours worth of testing. These renders take a long time, and as you can tell the software is terrible at telling you what any of these are actually good for. If they want people to buy Topaz for the £200 retail price, they need to add in at the very least picture examples, or not name them vague codenames based on ancient Greek culture. I want to upscale video games. What, what presets are you? Uh, Hercules. What does that mean? Is it f what? The process of actually remastering these video game cutscenes is quite the task based on how each game operates. First and most importantly, the games and videos need to be stored in a .bit format. If you played games during the PS3 360 era, you probably recognise this Bink logo. Turns out this actually means something. So we'll go to their website and download rad video tools for later. I'll use Castlevania as an example as not only did I want to upscale it, but the audio tracks within the cutscenes are also controlled by the in-game voice sound effects and music volume sliders, meaning that setting the game's volume to comfortable levels means the FMVs have an overly quiet and completely destroyed mix. So first we're going to find the folder where all the BIC movies are, and convert them into something the upscaler can use. Using Handbrake, which if you don't know anything about video, it's an incredibly useful piece of video conversion software. We'll batch convert all these bits into MP4s. Not M4Vs, which Handbrake can do. Go into settings, turn it off, because then Topaz won't select them, and it's a whole thing, it's very irritating. I'm going to make a preset to make sure I can batch convert these at high quality and not recompress the audio. A tricky thing about these in-game FMVs is that the audio you end up hearing in-game is actually multiple different stereo and mono tracks that are played over one another at the same time, and we're going to be converting things a bunch the audio was already compressed in the first place, so we don't want to lose any more quality. Once we converted the Bix into MP4s, we'll get them lined up in Topaz with the best algorithm. For Gaia CG upscaling from 720p to 1440p in the case of Castlevania, it took me about 4.8 seconds per frame. The cutscenes run at 25fps and altogether they are, let's just say, about 45 minutes long. So do the maths and it takes 
5400 minutes or 90 hours to upscale all these cutscenes. You can see why I've been doing this over a month now. And also it's a pandemic, you know, you gotta, you gotta spend your time somehow. Now we have the upscaled videos, we're gonna open a video editor. I use DaVinci Resolve because I'm unemployed. Even if we weren't gonna remix and fix the audio, we would still need to use a video editor because the upscaler only retains the first audio track of the video you convert. <sighs> yeah, I told you it wasn't very good. So in our new project, I'm going to take the untouched audio from our original handbrake conversion, put them onto the timeline, and then place the upscaled video over them. I found a good wee trick of perfectly matching frames up if you have to stop and start rendering one file at a time because you can't keep your computer on 24 seven. You can place the second track over the first, change the blend mode on it to difference, enjoy the surprisingly psychedelic beautiful effect, and then move the top video back frame by frame until it turns black. That's when you've got the videos matched up perfectly. I'm sure that's common knowledge to video editors, but I was very proud when I figured that out. And my mummy gave me an ice cream for it. With this, we'll adjust the audio levels until we get it sounding right, which in some cases takes a lot of work. Castlevania has some very poor mixing on the cutscenes. Dialogue will often be drowned out by Gabriel's five-ton Timberlands he likes to walk about in. Or other ludicrously loud sound effects. I found that peak volume of about minus five decibels ends up sounding pretty balanced in game. Another we know about Lords of Shadow is that for whatever reason, if your resultant BIC file has a higher resolution than 1080p, the game won't load them. It's little abnormalities like this which makes the remastering process so arduous. Other games I've tried have no problem with 1440p footage, just not Castlevania. So I'm going to export it in DNxHR, which is functionally lossless, which is what we want. And then I'll reconvert that into an MP4 file with H.265, which will give us a high quality, low storage video that can be converted back into a final BIC. Final step. Don't, final step, don't worry, we're almost there. Now I'm going to take all my nice and shiny fixed and upscaled footage and convert them back into dot .bics that the game will detect. The main issue that makes this kind of disheartening is that bit compression sucks. This is a really old format and by today's standards it's pretty terrible. To get a decent looking final 1080p image, I need to set the bitrate to 3 megabits per second. The auto mode gives about 2 to 2.5 but it can leave a lot of blockiness in some areas, which means that the original mp4 video that was 214 megabytes results in a 700 megabyte dot bit file, and that's just for 1080p. I have a new friend suggestion, Michelle. Hey, Michelle, in the, middle, in the middle of some fucking geek science, but I'll, I'll get back to you. Enslaved has 1440p videos that get big really fast. This high storage cost and the amount of time it takes to further upscale images is why I didn't go for 4K upscaling. I would end up in Call of Duty levels of wasted storage. Oh, interesting wee note by the way, I forgot about this. DaVinci Resolve has quite an impressive frame interpolation neural networking power tool. I'm just seeing buzzwords at this point. Anyway, it uses its stealth dematerialization array to interpolate 25 FPS footage up to 50, or 30 FPS up to 60, whatever you want. Quick user guide, if you want to test it out, make a new project, make the timeline's frame rate double your input footage, so for Castlevania clips we'll make it 50 FPS, then we'll scroll down to frame interpolation, set retime process to optical flow, and motion estimation mode to enhance better. Since we're putting 25 FPS footage into a 50 FPS timeline, what this essentially does is tell DaVinci to fill in our missing frames with its black magic super sauce. And I've found that if your footage has slow moving objects and no transparencies, you can see the transparent edge of this lightsaber here completely breaks the illusion. The results are really impressive. When all the stars align, you would never know this is all non-native footage being messed around with by the computer gods. Unfortunately, double the frames also means double the data needed to be stored. So bar some very short little cutscenes where the effect is flawless, I haven't interpolated any cutscenes in Castlevania. I've done some tests and doubling the frame rate messes up the subtitle timing, so 50 FPS cutscenes in game will result in subtitles going twice as quick. I wanted to make some 50 FPS options for cutscenes that did work for, but it just seems too broken to be worth it. And that's the computer magic of AI upscaling video games. As my frequent complaints throughout the video have indicated, there's still a long way to go. The Topaz software itself is a semi-functional, unintuitive mess. Algorithms are given barely any description, with no accompanying images or examples, so I hope the findings I discussed earlier are useful for people trying to decide what the hell to do with them. Along with this, really limited options like not being able to create projects with default settings so you can upscale a whole series of similar content without altering settings individually, random crashing and sometimes just broken unusable results like you saw from the Star Wars footage, 
Along with this, the latest version of Topaz grinds my computer to a stuttering, unusable halt, while previous versions still allowed me to use my computer without feeling like I'd been given non-prescription medication from a stranger. So you can see there's too many improvements to be made before I'd recommend anyone spend £200 on this software, and a subsequent £50 every 6 months for updates. Which frankly I just think is a ridiculous business model and I don't see most people wanting to open their wallets for it in the first place. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope I hope that was entertaining and you learned a lot. So like I mentioned in the video, I've been working on Star Wars, Disney work. Uh, I also tried stuff with Infamous and Heavenly Sword. Although I forgot to mention other FMVs, like making other FMVs and putting them back in, just uh, just doesn't work on RPCS3. It's an alpha, so I'm not really too broken up about it right now. But um, so PS3 games can upscale those out now. Sad times. Uh, Prince of Persia is done. I will put the artwork somewhere so people can have a look because it's, it's pretty good uh, and i'll also make sure you can download the upscaled stuff if you want to play prince of persia 2008 because it's uh it's a it's a good game it's not great but it's a good game it's fun uh castlevania i'm still working on but i'm playing through the whole game so i want to make sure everything works first enslaved i'm also working on and playing through the whole game uh because for enslaved as well there's some cutscenes that just they're like poorly made there's just bad cuts and like missing audio like i'll put in a clip here there's a cutscene where you're on top of a plane and there's like no wind sound it's just this awkward <laughs> it's just andy circus grunting by himself it's really weird oh also see because there's all like 20 tracks see when you get these video files into davinci and press play you get like five different nationalities of andy circus screaming uh, which is surprisingly entertaining <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will be making a review of Ghost of Tsushima Legends, even though, let's be honest, who really fucking cares at this point? Uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a preview. Um, it's all right. For links for finished projects, I will put in a pinned comment or the description. I haven't decided yet, so ooh, have fun figuring out where to find it. And uh, thanks for watching. See you for my next pandemic-related project. Cheers. Cheers to that.